In 2009, 18-year-old world champion athlete Casta Semenya found herself at the center of one of the most intrusive media firestorms in sport. The way you are born is the way you are born. With that comes rumors. I heard one that you were born a man. Unbelievable. And it was at the dinner table my youngster said, he said, this is wrong, Dad. The next morning I said, right, this is wrong. A world champion suddenly suspended from competition. Her career lay in ruins. Oh, I don't give a shit about athletics anymore, so yeah, yeah. So running or not running is the same story, so yeah, for me. Over the next few months, this shy teenager gave us unprecedented access during the most testing period of her life, as she fought to run again. It reveals a human story behind the international tabloid headlines. August the 19th, 2009, was a pivotal day in the life of young athlete Casta Semenya. World Championship 800 meter final. This is a true world class field, and there's one very dominant athlete in the shape of Casta Semenya. According to coach, he just told me straight, that gold is yours. Just go and grab the gold and come back. But Semenya is away and gone. Looked behind, has got the gold medal sewn up in the bag. Caster was just 18 years old. She'd learned to run barefoot on dirt tracks in South Africa, yet now she found herself cheered to victory at one of the world's top stadiums. But even as she'd lined up at the start, events had already been set in motion that were to turn that night into a hollow victory. When we came on air about uh, three and a half hours or so ago, there was a story breaking that centred on Pastor Semenya from South Africa. The IAAF isn't accusing her of doping or even cheating, but her progress this year has been extraordinary and they want to know why. In this particular case, there were suspicions and rumours that, um, you know, there was some doubts really about her gender. The IAAF governing body of athletics said that they had asked the South African authorities to conduct a gender test on her to prove whether she was able or not to actually compete in these games as a woman. The new world champion was left to fend off intrusive allegations that called into question her very identity. I heard one that you were born a man. What do you have to say about stuff like that? I have, one, I have no idea about that thing because I haven't heard that thing. Who said it? And I don't know. I don't give a damn about it. What makes a lady? Does it mean if you're wearing skirts and dresses, you are a lady? There's nothing I can say, yes, I'm a lady. Yeah, I have those guts. Being a lady. I don't give up. I am not a quit. If I started something, I must finish it. The lawyers seize the moment. If they can establish that Caster's ban is official, it would leave them one last option, legal action. They catch the next plane to Cape Town and head out to Stellenbosch. En route to the stadium, they devise a plan. Coach is to register Caster for the race as if nothing has happened. Ben and myself will be in the background. I think Coach is equipped for this. But obviously if there's any difficulties, he'll come back and then we'll take it to whatever level we have to. But I think this is Coach's terrain. He's in control of it. If we need to step up to the mark, we will. But when they get to Stellenbosch Stadium, they discover their plan has been thwarted. This is by invitation only. Ah, that's right. We just want to register. To register. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, she must run. Ah. 
unfortunately, no, you're not allowed to shoot anything further. With our camera asked to leave the room, Coach, Caster, her lawyers and ASA hold a private summit meeting. After a tense couple of hours, the lawyers had their answer. Caster is officially banned. Legal action appears their only option. On the 6th of July 2010, 11 months after Berlin, the 800-meter world champion received the news she'd been waiting for. And first, our breaking news, that news that just came in within the last few moments of the South African athlete, This story broke this afternoon, the world 800-meter champion, Casta Semenya. Her gender has been cleared to race again against other women runners. The IAAF stated simply that they had accepted the findings of medical experts and Castor was indeed eligible to compete with immediate effect anywhere in the world. They and ASA gave us no further comment, but it was all that Castor needed. It's finally the day of Caster's return to international competition. This is supposed to be a low-key event, but even as she walks to the track to register, stalked by paparazzi, she knows the world is watching. I had a lot in my mind. But at the end of the day, I must face the consequences. I must go and run. It all comes down to the next two minutes. When I'm running, I don't hear anything. I don't hear anything at all. Despite everything, Caster wins comfortably and is finally back in the game. It was good, you know, to be back, you know. <laughs> it's not easy to, to wait uh, 11 months, you know, to, for actually for, for, for this result, you know, to come back and run. So, yeah, it was hard, you know. It's inspirational to a lot of people to actually say, I know who I am and I'm going to stand strong in who I am. Caster came close to losing a promising career. And she's not the only athlete being judged according to ambiguous rules of sex verification. Behind the scenes of international athletics, other women are being pushed silently out of sport. If something like this cannot happen to anybody in athletics, it'd be good. <laughs> 